to another episode of Speed Reviews. If you're new here, I go over all of the new products that I've been testing and giving you an update on them. Now that I feel comfortable enough to share with you these products, my feelings after using them for a while. I, I take a lot of pride having this series on my channel because I do think it's really important to come back and update you guys and show you I truly am using and testing these products. So you know, I test a lot now. Now this is actually kind of a part two because last week I did a 38 product speed reviews video for you guys and I told you I actually had a lot of products already lined up, revved up, ready to go for a second parter. So here we are kind of finishing that up. I've been testing a lot of products recently. So let's get started. First off, I want to say a huge thank you to City Beauty for sponsoring this portion of today's video. I'm going to talk about my favorite products that I've tried from the brand because they are so good. This is how you can get the ultimate lip long lasting, comfortable, and also very plumping and smoothing. So the products that have really stood out from the brand for me have been the City Lips Matte Plumping Lip Creams and then the City Lips Plumping Lip Glosses. I have both products on my lips and these products are key for a super long lasting and plumped looking lip. I've been shocked whenever I've worn these products. First, I want to talk about the matte lip creams because I know matte lips can be intimidating. But one important thing to understand about City Beauty is that they formulate their products with mature skin in mind. That's why with these guys, they wanted to bring in a plumping, smoothing, and hydrating aspect. So these don't leave your lips feeling dry or cracked, and they're actually quite smoothing and very thin and can feel that slight plumping sensation on the lips, nothing too overwhelming. And you can see in the demo how smooth my lips look, considering it is a liquid lipstick-esque kind of product. And it does set down and does not move. It even holds the outer lip line. So you know sometimes with these lip creams, you feel like you still need a lip liner. These hold their own on the outer lip line and they don't bleed or swim out of the fine lines outside of the lips, making them great for mature skin. They are formulated specifically to hydrate, add volume to the lips, while also soothing the lips and not being too drying. So I love these. They don't budge. They're nice and lightweight and they don't make your lips look crackly or gross or anything like that. Now the City Lips Lip Gloss, from what I understand, is a bestseller and I can see why. If you have a lot of lines on your lips, this will visibly smooth over the lips like you can see how nice and smooth my lips look I don't have any lip filler or anything so I do have lines in my lips and this just ooh, smooths them right over they have a large shade range I have quite a few here to share with you all with different finishes they have a clear coat they have metallic finish they also have kind of like a more smooth finish as well they're very pigment packed as well so the color that you see in the component is the color that you get on your lips. You can't go wrong with the clear though. It goes with everything I have it on today and even though it's a gloss, it lasts so long. I don't understand the combo of the lip cream and the lip gloss. Magic combo, I'm telling you. This is a perfect solution for thin lips, dry lips, because it does feel really hydrating and wrinkled lips as well. You know, it's deeply hydrating. It does give a nice little plump to the lips without feeling too intense and painful on the lips. It honestly feels quite soothing. So, so those two products from City Beauty, I have been thoroughly enjoying Enjoying. And you know what's great? In honor of National Lipstick Day, City Beauty is having a BOGO sale for their best seller, City Lips, which is what I just showed you. BOGO, buy one, get one free. So how it's gonna work is you're gonna need to add two to cart in order for it to apply. And then you're going to receive two for the price of one. And this is a really great deal for these products. They're very high quality. And this is going to run from July 29th to August 1st. So you only have a few days. If you use the code MORGAN50 at checkout to get that discount. And I will also have the link to purchase them down below and all of the details for that. So again, thank you City Lips for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Let's get into all of my other reviews because you know we got a lot of them. So let's go ahead and get started with face primers. I have two today. I have one on this side of the face and that's going to be the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. If I'm being honest, I don't think I'm the best candidate for a matte primer. But I figure, you know what, I am a little bit more oily and sweaty with it being summer right now. So I still give this a try and this definitely does mattify without being too drying or too mattifying. I don't know. I think it is a 
nice primer. I'm not the perfect candidate for it though, so for those of you with oily skin, I can't really tell you if it blocks the oils from coming through. I don't know how it does with longevity. What I'm able to tell from it is that if I have a really shiny base before applying makeup, this does a good job of matting it down, but not overly so. Like my skin still looks hydrated. There still is a little bit of a healthy glow to it, but this kind of gets the oiliness out of it. So I do like this, but again, keep in mind, not the perfect candidate here. I'm not going to pretend to be, but I've liked this for myself and I think it's quite versatile for a large range of skin types, which I think is important. This primer right here is amazing. This is the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. This is not a new product, but certainly new to me. They did send it to me in a PR package and I love this. This is a very hyped up product, one that I was very late to the game on, but I am so happy that I got to try it. It is soothing, it is smoothing, it is hydrating. It doesn't leave too much of a glow behind, but it really preps the skin texture for the makeup that's going to go on top. So I love the way that my skin feels after I use it. I see the hype. I know it's a pricier product, but I think it does a really nice job of just making my skin feel nice before I apply makeup. I would say the major thing that this primer does is it smooths the skin while adding a little bit of hydration. So if you're looking for something around that nature, this is great. Moving on, I only have one foundation-esque kind of product to share in today's video. That is the Hourglass Illusion Hyaluronic Skin Tint. And I have a lot of Hourglass stuff here today because they sent me a PR package and I've used them enough to like talk a lot about their stuff. So I went in the shade Warm Ivory. I was kind of worried at first that this would be too dark of a shade for me, but it actually blends out and kind of oxidizes is a wee bit to be a good shade. It's a thicker consistency. Did not think I was going to like this. Are people talking about this or am I actively avoiding it? Because I've never heard about this product from Hourglass, but it is so good. I think it is an underrated product on the market. It's a skin tint, but it does give, I want to say like a light medium coverage. It doesn't get gross or dewy. It lasts a really long time considering it's like a skin tint. It is a beautiful, beautiful product. This is actually of the foundation products that I've tried thus far from Hourglass. I know they have a new one. I haven't tried it yet at the current day that I'm filming this. Of the new complexion products, this is genuinely my favorite that I've tried from them. It is really nice and lightweight, even though it's a thicker consistency, has a little bit of SPF 15 in here, beautiful product. Per your guys' recommendation, I did end up picking up the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum, and I really enjoy this concealer. I think it is a very nice one from the drugstore. It sits really nice and light on my under eyes. It doesn't get too much into the creases. As long as I pair it with a nice powder, my under eyes look really great. It feels very lightweight. It's a beautiful texture, so I like to actually put it on more than just my under eyes. I'll use it kind of for additional coverage. So if I want a light coverage day, I will, you know, use a skin tint to do moisturize or whatever it may be. And then I like to actually use this to kind of cover the extra red spots, the spots that need a little bit more evening out. Love the consistency of it all over the skin as opposed just to the under eyes. It is a beautiful concealer. Thank you guys so much for recommending it to me. Moving on to cream blush, I have a couple of different formulas to talk about. So the first are from Hourglass. These have been here for a while, but I'm excited that I finally got to dive in. I've only tried two shades so far. I have a few more to go, but the ones that I've been playing with were Wonder, which is a little bit more of a neutral pinky peachy kind of shade. And then the one that I'm wearing on this side of the cheek and you'll see in the demo is Sacred, which is a little bit more of a pinky color. These are a very nice blush stick. I don't know that they're probably worth the money, but I am enjoying my time with them. They're drier than I thought they would be. I thought they would end up being like a really creamy emollient formula. That's kind of what I'm into and seems to be what's very trendy nowadays. These are a little bit drier, but I do think that that helps with longevity and it isn't hard to blend out even though it's kind of a little bit more of a stiff formula than what I'm used to. So these are really, really nice. They're not going to go down as my favorite blush stick of all time, but I think Hourglass did a good job with these. Ooh, okay. These are weird. Some days I like this product, sometimes I don't. Most times I don't actually. These are the Tarte Cheek Stains. I have three colors. There's some weird things going on with this product. So let me just say this. A very sheer product. I don't get too much color to show up specifically when I'm wearing any product on my face with a good amount of coverage. So I like these lip and cheek stains for days that I'm wearing my no makeup makeup or days that I'm actually not wearing too much makeup and I just want a little bit of colors on the cheek. These work really well over 
nearly bare skin. If I have coverage on my face, these don't work well with that. I have to build it up, build it up. It's just too much work. Also don't really look good on the lips, even though they're supposed to like stain the lips. The only color that looks good on the lips is this one that looks like it'd be crazy on me. What color? Flush. This is the only one that actually gives me a flush. So not good, not really doing the claims that they claim. And if I do have a product with coverage underneath, they don't last long. I have some of, I believe, Tipsy today. And then weird behavior that's been going on, this exposed one, it melted and leaked. And you can see there's liquid all around the packaging. I have no clue if it melted, but why is it only this one? Concerning, very, very concerning. <laughs> I have no glue. 90% of the time that I wore these, I didn't like them at all. But when I wore this on a day that I was going out this summer, I had like a little bit of concealer under my eyes and that was it. And I used these to kind of add direct color to my cheek where I wanted it. Loved it, thought they lasted a long time, the perfect amount of color, a really great finish. So I'm keeping them because I love them on bare skin. And if you're that kind of gal, you'll like these, but if you're a makeup wearer, I don't really like those. Okay, powder blushes. So I got these sent to me from Camera Ready Cosmetics. These are a newish launch from Lethal Cosmetics. Gotta put them in a palette. <laughs> I don't have them in there, but they're these glow powders, and I have had to learn to love these, but now that I've learned, I love these. So what kind of is an initial turn off about this product is it's very, very glowy and very, very pigmented. So when the brush, you put it on the brush and you put it on the cheek initially, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I made a mistake. Your cheek's gonna be really, really shiny. It's a huge layer of pigment right there and it's gonna be overwhelming and you're gonna look like a disco ball. But Give it a chance as you blend it out and work it out, you have the prettiest glowy finish on the cheek. Now it is really glowy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> if you don't like a glowy look on the cheek, you won't like these, they are a glow powder after all. But after you work it out, kind of spread out those particles and ingredients, it looks so pretty on the skin. You definitely have to be gunning for a glowy cheek look to enjoy these, but I love how the colors blend out. But every single time I use this and I let the brush hit my cheek, I'm always like, ooh, did I make a mistake? But once you blend it out, such a beautiful Beautiful product. Next up, I have the boxed blushes from Benefit. These are kind of a re-promotion. They repackaged it, redid everything with these. There's a bunch of new shades. Such a good launch from Benefit. So there's a lot of shades. I haven't used every single one, but Currently my two favorite, Willa. I have Willa on this cheek. It's just a really pretty, somewhat glowy, mauve-y, plummy color. I also really like peach in. I think it's such a fun, light, bright peach color for the summer. But I know all of these are amazing. I've definitely been reaching for them. They have a beautiful scent to them. They're a beautiful formula. The matte ones don't feel too drying. They still blend out very easily. The shimmer ones look really beautiful on the cheek. Not nearly as glowy as the lethal, but they definitely give a nice little oomph. I mean, these are technically like not super new from Benefit. They've had box blushes before, but this relaunch, repromote, whatever they did, I think they did a fabulous job with and they all smell so good too. So been loving those. Those are definitely worth picking up if you see some shades that you like. I have three different kind of highlighter -y formulations to share with you. So first I did a whole recently what's new at ColourPop with I believe the recent four collections that launched. And so in the Opal of My Eye collection, they came out with these Super Shock Highlighter Quads. These are my absolute favorite thing from this collection. And I'll continue to update you with other things from the collection, but these are the ones that I've been using the most and felt the most comfortable sharing my thoughts with you. So for me, as somebody with a lighter skin tone, my as Shell is the one that I would recommend. It's really neat because they have kind of a holographic pinky highlight and then they have a lavender one but then they have like a champagne and gold so you still have natural shades in here i love the super shock cheek highlight formula i like to use a sponge to push it into the skin and it looks really natural and seamless that way so i'm excited to have a super shock quad okay i just think the colors in here are so pretty and soft and still a little bit unique they did a great job with this as far as the deeper one obviously if you have a medium to deep Complexion, definitely recommend this for you. I actually really like using this as a blush. The other ones I've 
somewhat stayed away from. This one I was able to kind of mix in with this one. You could use these on the lid. I'd rather just get a Super Shock Shadow, but these are super duper nice. Highly recommend them. It's one of my favorite launches from ColourPop product wise. Like the opal of my eye collection didn't amaze me, but these did. Also from ColourPop, another Super Shock highlighter. This is from the In The Springs collection. There were three, I believe that came out, but one that only suited my skin tone. This is Flip Flop. It's a very beautiful soft glow. I mean, you already know I love this formula. Not a unique color, not necessarily something that was a must have. I've been using it a lot. It's been a really pretty soft golden glow on the skin. Yeah, I mean, I like it. Probably not a necessity if you have Super Shock cheeks in your collection. The best value here is going to be the quad. That one is still very nice. And the last highlight that I have to share with you is from Revolution Pro. A while back, they came out with the Marilyn Monroe collection, and that came to me about the time that I moved. So the collection kind of got put on the back burner, and then I recently did pick up this highlight to try out, and unfortunately, it didn't work out for me. It looks really cool, glimmery, and glam, but unfortunately, there's just too much chunky glitter in here for me to get behind it. I've been able to utilize this for super glittery looks, like for highlight in the inner corner, all over the lid, or or if I have glitter everywhere, why not put it on my highlight as well? But I'm not tempted to reach for this. It really is just too glittery. I kind of gave it its last hurrah on my face today. Now I have glitter on my face for this video. But yeah, I don't necessarily recommend this. I still have a few things to try from the collection. So maybe I'll update you in the future about those products. But for now, the highlight didn't work out for me. I have one setting powder. I actually tried this months back and then put it away because it wasn't a good color for me. And then I recently pulled it back out and I really actually gave it a good chance this time. This is from Armani Beauty. It's the Luminous Silk Glow Fusion Powder. I don't necessarily enjoy this for like a setting powder, but I enjoy it as a finishing powder because it does add a very, very subtle glow to it. It doesn't have enough grab for me to enjoy it as a setting powder. I like a setting powder that I can really get in there and morph with my face products and set the makeup. This to me is just to kind of put on top to add a nice subtle glow. I actually think that this is quite pretty. I don't see it as a product that I'm going to incorporate in my everyday makeup routine, but it does fit really well with the trendy glow glowing complexion that's going on. If you like a glowy complexion, I think you will enjoy this. I think it's a very nice product, but it's not a powder that I'm like gung-ho about, if that makes sense. And then the last two products for complexion are going to be setting spray. I've tried two recently. The first one is from Milani. This is the Make It Last Sunscreen Setting Spray in SPF 30. When this first came to my doorstep, I was very excited about it because I really, really do enjoy the Make It Last setting spray, and I didn't even think to feature it because I thought it was just going to be the same as the original. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, it smells so strong and I am not one to get offended by fragranced products, but this is not not good. It's, it's quite potent. It smells like you're spraying a sunscreen on your face, but really fragranced and intense. Kind of burns your face a little bit. Uh, yeah, there's sunscreen in it, but I'm okay with just massaging it into my skin before and not having to use that. So I like the original, the sunscreen one. We didn't get along that great. <laughs> Now, a setting spray that is the Hourglass Soft Focus Setting Spray, Veil, whatever. The Hourglass Setting Spray, so good. Now, this is only good if you like a glowy setting spray, but I just feel like this finishes it off. If I'm looking cakey or heavy or dry, I just spray this all over and my skin looks glowy, dewy, delicious. You know, we got the cakiness kind of smoothed out over here with this phenomenal product. I highly recommend you check out the full face of Hourglass that I did. I was floored with so many of the products that I got to try that have been around for a long time. This is one of them, one of my favorites. I mean, you know, the primer, and so good. Let me move on. <laughs> so I got a lovely PR package from a brow brand called Brow Code, and I one day tried their micro brow pencil, not thinking too much of it. Whoa, these are so, so good. Oh my gosh. A very nice, thin brow pencil. I mean, I know how many brows, brow products can we try, right? There's so many, but I consider myself to be picky when it comes to brow pencils. This is the perfect consistency. I love how thin it is. It blends out beautifully without getting everywhere or looking not precise. It looks super precise. 
a really solid brow pencil. I have mine in the shade Brunette. At least that's the color I've been wearing. It's not too warm. It's the perfect shade. I don't need to press down too hard or too soft to get the color down. I've honestly been really enjoying this and reaching for it intentionally. Not just reaching for it because it's in my makeup to wear drawer, but I've been intentionally grabbing for it because I enjoy using it. Um, I mean, I've tried this product before, but it had been a while. I have a few more shades to try, but I just want to affirm my love for the Hourglass Scattered Light Glitter Eyeshadows. I ended up giving mine all to my mom, so it had been a while since I used these. But as of late, I've only been using the shade Vivid because I've been a green girl this summer. But this has a nice base level of pigment to it and a really pretty and sophisticated glimmer without it looking like actual glitter on the eyelid. They last a long time. They don't crease. If you're looking for a good glimmering shade in a pot, the Hourglass did a phenomenal job. Sophisticated yet still glimmery. We love that. We love that here. I actually have a few more shades to throw on my eyes. Not sure if I'll end up updating you on those because you know the formula is good, right? Okay, so from the In the Springs collection in ColourPop, I had a few gel liners that came out. I believe they were all re-promoted shades, but there's something about what they sent that was a little extra on the creamy side. There's a blue one that rolled away somewhere, so I can't find it right now. But what a good set of colors. We have Overboard, which is a metallic brown. I use that in my lower lash line. It's so pretty for a soft brown smoke under there. Honey Dude, which is a skin tone shade. It lasts a long time. We have an orange shade and a blue shade, which aren't something that I typically wear, but it's good to just to have in your collection. You never know, and you don't have to break the bank. Something about the set and the gel liners in here are really creamy. Maybe it's just because they're new, but I thought I'd share the love with that. Another eyeliner that I've been testing is from Bare Minerals. This is the Maximus liquid liner. I'm on the fence about this. I really like the formula of this. I like the way that my eyeliner looks with this. I like that I can get a really sharp wing with it. It's nice and black. It doesn't budge. But the application on this for me is a bit too difficult. It's a brush tip applicator, but I feel like it's a little bit too small and flimsy, so it, it takes me a while to trace out the shape that I want. It really is kind of challenging for me. I always love the end result. Always, always. It's just so nice and black, and I get a nice sharp wing because of the brush tip, but but I can't throw it on and go. It takes a while for me to get there. Formula on this is really good. Bare Minerals did a nice job. It doesn't smudge, nothing like that. But applying it's kind of a pain in the butt. I know a few of you were excited about these Essence Lash Princess liners. Unfortunately, these did not end up working out for me. The brown shade really doesn't have enough pigment or product in there. It's a bit on the dry side. I always have to do a lot of layers to get the opacity that I'm looking for. I noticed they kind of run a little bit on days where, I don't know, I was laying down and my eyes were watering. I don't know why that happened, but it happened. I did notice them definitely smudging and transferring. Definitely not black enough compared to the Bare Minerals, which I have on this eye, and then I have these guys on this eye. Just not quite as black, not what I'm looking for. The felt tip is a bit big. I don't have too much trouble with the felt tip, but I can see other people having trouble with it. The main thing for me is it does not deposit enough color and you have to keep layering it to get that opacity. So unfortunately those are not as good as the mascara. I have a new mascara that I've been testing though from Tarte. This is the Tarte Lit Tubing Mascara. Mm, I love a tubing mascara, but this one just didn't do it for my lashes. I mean, it's okay. My lashes have a little sum sum to them, but nothing special. I like other tubing mascaras better. And also this is a tubing mascara that's really hard to get off. Like I, I do the water and it doesn't come off. It comes off better with makeup remover. If I'm being honest, it's just hard to get off. And I sign up for tubing mascaras to be easy take off, you know? It's so satisfying for me to use water and pull the tubes off my lashes. I can't get it to do that with this. I don't know, it's weird. Um, last product from Hourglass that I tried is this Luxe Velvet Story lip cream thing. Oh, she's kind of tiny and cute. This is a nice lip cream. It's very comfortable. It lasts a decent amount of time. It doesn't set down, so it's not like a liquid lipstick. It is a true lip cream. It's a bit soft, almost like plush on the lips. So I do feel that I do need to apply a lip liner underneath. It doesn't give enough definition to the lips. I definitely need something to define out there. Uh, so it's a, it's a decent lip cream. I don't have anything really bad to say about it. I wish I could shape the lips with it alone, but it has that plush look, which is like really soft and some people might like that and blur. Not for me. I want to be able to line my lips with this. So it's a nice consistency. 
that's that. Fenty Beauty launched the hydrating lip stain. I got mine in the shade Pout Sickle. So I haven't used this a ton because the color is a bit bright for what I normally wear. Your girl likes a nude lip, but this product does exactly what it claims to do. And it's kind of awesome. It is hydrating and it stains the lips. I love the popsicle look that you get with this. So you can apply it on the lips and just leave it and get a really bright color. Or you can actually just wipe off that top layer after letting it sit for like a minute or two and it leaves a gorgeous lip stain behind. I've used it a couple of times just to leave a quick stain underneath when, when I needed to have color to my lips. So yeah, I think this is really awesome. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Surprisingly hydrating, really great product from Fenty. Along with my ColourPop video, I tried from the Jasmine Chiswell collection these Luxe Lip Glosses. This is the shade Platinum Blonde. This is the name, it's very pretty. I tried this for review's sake. I knew I wasn't a big fan of this formula, but I just wanted to see what the pigmentation level was like with this. I don't like these lip glosses because they have kind of a Vaseline texture to them. It has pretty glitters in here. I actually really like the color. This is a great color, but not a fan of the Vaseline formula personally. This was no different than the others. It does actually have though a bit more pigmentation than some other Luxe glosses from ColourPop, so it's a slight step up, but still not in love with it. And then very last product I've been testing has been from Clarins. These are the Lip Comfort Oil. So, so nice. I believe these went viral. The one I've been wearing for every day is Honey because it's more so of a clear shade, but they have some other shades like Raspberry here and Cherry, which leaves more color behind. It's a nice, smoothing, hydrating lip oil. I don't think it beats Dior because I think Dior has a little bit more thickness to it, which helps grab the lips and last longer. But these are really nice, lightweight lip oil, very pretty. I see the hype behind them. I actually really like the colors of them and my favorite aspect of these is they smell like candy. They just have the most <sighs> intoxicating scent. So, so nice. Anyways, that was that. Those are all of the products that I have for today's speed reviews. If you've tried any of these products, feel free to fight me if you disagree with me or jump on the boat and agree with me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And then again, a huge thank you to City Beauty for sponsoring today's video. It was so lovely to work with you. Make sure you guys check out their BOGO sale for National Lipstick Days. I will have all of the details down below. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful and until next time, Make sure you're subscribed and like this video. Bye guys, have a good one.